Animal Legends, retold by Carol Watson. Chapter 1. The Cat and the Rat You might not believe it now, when cats chase rats and rats hate cats, but long ago they were best friends. One cat and rat lived very happily together on an island. The island had all they needed. There were birds for the cat to chase and plenty of juicy plants for the rat to nibble with her sharp front teeth. There was only one problem. There wasn't much else to do. Most days they were bored. Then, one morning, the rat had an idea. Why don't we look for somewhere else to live? Perfect. But how would we get there? The rat thought about it. How could they leave the island? Then she twitched her whiskers and smiled. That's easy, she said. We'll make a boat from the trunk of a tree. The rat gnawed at a tree until it toppled over. Timber! And the cat scratched out the inside of the trunk so they had somewhere to sit. Finally, the rat nibbled two branches and made them into oars. They were ready to go to sea. All aboard, it's time to start our adventure. The cat stepped into the boat and took the oars. Then the rat pushed the boat out onto the waves. Here goes, said the cat. Be careful, I don't want to get wet. There's nothing to worry about, said the rat. We'll be fine. They rode and rode until it grew dark. The cat was so tired, he fell asleep. Oh no, we forgot to bring food. But the rat felt hungry. She was so hungry, she began to nibble the side of the boat. But she made such a noise, she woke up the cat. What's that munching sound? Don't worry, squeaked the rat. You're dreaming. So the cat went back to sleep. The rat was very greedy and kept gnawing at the boat. Munch, munch, munch. Suddenly she stopped. Oh no, what have I done? The rat had eaten so much She'd made a hole in the boat. Water started to slosh up through the hole, and the boat began to sink. The cat woke up with a start. I'm wet, he squealed. We're sinking. We'll have to swim. They had to leap from the boat and swim for their lives. This is all your fault, rat. The cat was very angry. He hated getting wet. I'm going to eat you when we get to shore, he spluttered. Help! The rat scrambled up the shore and ran to a sand hill. She dug a hole as fast as she could and dived into it. Got to dig, got to dig. The hole was too small for the cat to squeeze into. I'm safe! thought the rat. But the cat didn't give up so easily. He peered into the hole. I'll wait for you, rat, he called. You'll have to come out sometime. I can wait all week. So he sat and he waited and waited and waited. But the rat never came out. She dug a tunnel all the way through the hill and ran out on the other side. Whew! I've escaped! And that is why today a cat will sit for hour upon hour 
waiting to pounce on a rat. Chapter 2 Why Monkeys Live in Trees Many years ago, the king of the jungle was a gorilla named Naresh. All the animals wanted to marry his daughter, but she didn't know who to choose. One day, Naresh spotted a big wooden barrel sitting on the grass. That's new, he said, and looked inside. Oh, what's that? The barrel was full of greasy water. Naresh took a sip. It tasted like fire. Fire water? He said. That might be useful. Naresh took the barrel home and called the other animals together. I have a barrel of fire water, he said, and it will help us decide who's to marry my daughter. Whoever can drink the whole barrel may have my beautiful daughter as his bride. The animals were very excited. Everyone wanted to try. They pushed and shoved closer to the barrel, but the elephant got there first. Out of my way! I'm first! Big bully! Just watch! This will be easy! He boasted. The elephant dipped his trunk into the barrel. He sucked up some fire water and sneezed. Achoo! Ow! He snorted, spraying water everywhere. It stings! No one could drink that! And he rushed off. The hippopotamus tried next. I live in the river and drink water all the time, he said. I'm not scared of a bit of fire water. So he took a big mouthful. And almost choked. He spat out the fire water and ran to the river to cool his mouth. Next, the warthog stepped forward. I can eat or drink anything, he bragged. No problem. He drank from the barrel and coughed. Ugh! That's horrible! He shouted. Yuck! What fools you are! cried a voice. It was the leopard. And you're all far too ugly to marry the king's daughter. I am handsome, and I shall drink the water. He stepped up to the barrel and just as quickly stepped back again. Even the smell of fire water made him feel sick. The other animals laughed at the leopard, and he crept away in shame. Then a little voice popped up. Please, Naresh, may I try the water? It was a tiny monkey. The animal stared at him. How could he drink the water? Naresh smiled. You can try if you want, he said, but you must drink all the water and finish it today. I don't want a single drop left. May I drink a little at a time with rests in between? asked the monkey. Naresh was a fair king. Of course, he said. So the tiny monkey climbed onto the barrel. The other animals gathered around, grinning. This was going to be funny. I, Talinga, shall drink the water and marry Naresh's daughter. But the monkey seemed very sure of himself. The monkey gulped a large mouthful of the fire water, then ran off into the bushes. It tastes disgusting. Where's he going? the other animals wondered. After a few moments, the monkey was back. He climbed up the side of the barrel, took another gulp of fire water. 
and ran off to the bushes, just, just as he's done before. But Talinga, the monkey, had a secret. He wasn't alone. Behind the bushes sat a whole tribe of monkeys, who all looked exactly the same. Tee hee 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 ha 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 Each monkey took turns to drink some of the burning fire water. By the end of the day, the barrel was empty. The other animals were astonished. Naresh's daughter is mine. Now I shall meet my bride, said Talinga proudly. The monkey stood before the old gorilla. Well done, said Naresh. You have completed the task. You may marry my daughter. But his daughter didn't look too pleased. I've got to marry him? Ah, my lovely bride! Suddenly, the giraffe gave a shout. He had seen something interesting. Hey, he cried. There's a whole tribe of monkeys hiding in the bushes. What are you up to? Talinga cheated, roared the animals. His friends have helped him. The monkeys didn't wait to hear any more. They ran off, leaping into the trees to be out of reach. We'll get them for this. Monkeys have lived up in trees ever since. They're much too scared to come down. Chapter 3 The Rabbits and the Crocodile There was once a time when crocodiles lived on land, not in the water. One grumpy old crocodile lived near a river and lazed in the sun all day. One day, a baby rabbit hopped past, looking for some tasty leaves. Hello, he called and woke up the crocodile. The crocodile was furious. Go away, I'm trying to sleep. As the crocodile shut his eyes again, the rabbit hopped closer. He had spotted a bunch of fresh green leaves just by the crocodile's nose. Mmm, these are yummy. With loud crunching, he began to gobble them up. The crocodile's eyes snapped open. Get away from those leaves, he roared, and he snapped at the rabbit with his enormous jaws. Go away! The little rabbit ran and ran. He didn't stop until he reached his burrow. The crocodile nearly ate me, he told his mother. But I didn't do anything wrong. I was only eating some leaves. There, there, you're safe now. His mother was very angry. It's time that crocodile was taught a lesson, she said firmly. He's grumpy and lazy and it just won't do. Is everyone here? Gathering the other rabbits together, she told them she had a plan. The next day, the rabbits went into the woods. They collected branches, twigs, and leaves, and stuffed them into a sack. Will this do? Almost full! That's enough, said the rabbit's mother, and off they went to find the crocodile. They didn't have to look far. He was by the riverbank, asleep, as usual. The rabbits crept closer. <sighs> Sneaking up, they made a big circle of twigs, leaves, and branches around the crocodile. Then the mother rabbit set light to the circle. The fire crackled and spat and smoke billowed up. The crocodile woke with a jump. 
When he saw the fire, he bellowed in fear. Help! Fire! The fire was licking at his scales. Taking a flying leap, he jumped right over the flames. <laughs> Funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and disappeared into the river with a splash. When the crocodile heard the rabbits laughing, he was very annoyed. He shouted at them from the river. Don't ever come near the river again! Ha 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 ha! Keep off our land then, cried the rabbits. And that's how it stayed ever since. <laughs>